hometown favorite Jeff Gordon. His practice speed showed him off the mark, but when the time came, he won the pole position for the second straight year for the Brickyard 400. Dale Earnhardt, with painful injury suffered last Sunday at Talladega, strapped himself into his car, knowing he had one lap to qualify. The speed was 12th fastest. Now the question is, how long can he race tomorrow? A.J. Foyt failed to make the field. He'll try again today. A position in the lineup will be a dream come true for Stacey Compton. Ron Barfield was 46th fastest yesterday. Steve Seligman needs about 10 miles an hour. Robbie Thaggart knows he has one tour of the Oval to get in. Jeff Purvis seeks his second start. He made the field in 94. Gary Bradbury dreams of running at the world-famous two-and-a-half-mile oval. And Jason Keller is trying every combination to get his car up to speed. This is where the effort begins and ends. Gasoline Alley, the yard of bricks, the start-finish line. Who will make the field and who will have to wait another year to get into the lineup for the Brickyard 400? Welcomes you live for more qualifying for the third annual Brickyard 400. We're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and it's second round qualifying. It is crunch time. 15 drivers have indicated they want a second attempt at qualifying and we're just about set to go. Here's Jerry Punch. Bob out on the line here yesterday. 48 cars rolled off to attempt to qualify for what 25 starting spots in round one of qualifying. If you do the math, that leaves 23 cars vying for 13 starting spots. Of those 23, eight will stand on their time from yesterday. And behind me, 15 cars and drivers, hopefuls lined up to make a run today. They know they get one chance, one final chance, one lap on this 2.5 mile oval to be able to run the biggest race in NASCAR history in terms of purse, $4.7 million. These 15 drivers know the sacrifices are high. You may come here with nothing, but if your sacrifice pays off, you may leave here with a lot. Here's Bill Weber. Most race fans are very familiar with these magnificent haulers that the NASCAR Winston Cup teams use to get from race to race. It's beautiful in here. There's a lounge up front, everything you could possibly need for your race car. Room for two race cars on top of this transporter. There's a microwave, a refrigerator. If you walk out the back, there's a television monitor hooked up to a satellite so you can watch our ESPN2 coverage. There's a computer screen right here that keeps track of all the times of the race cars on the track. It's everything you need to get to the race each week and then a few things to make it a little bit more enjoyable when you do get there. I think the race teams really appreciate that. I'll tell you one guy that really would appreciate something like that. Stacy Compton from Lynchburg, Virginia. How did he get here? He towed this trailer. It's not very big, but it is very effective. Everything he needs, maybe not everything he wants, but everything he needs is right in here. Room for his race car, his tires, his springs, his shocks. The backup car, which is still sitting in this trailer, was towed up here on a separate trailer. The car Stacy's using to qualify here, the same car he qualified so well with at Martinsville, Virginia. And how did the driver get to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Well. He helped drive this dually 15 hours from Lynchburg, Virginia. A lot of multi-million dollar teams are trying to win the Brickyard 400. A few teams trying to make their dream come true. And Ned, just by finishing last in this race because of the size of the purse, you can make some money here. Here are the top qualifiers from yesterday. Now remember that the top 25 were automatically locked in to a starting position with Jeff Gordon starting from the pole. The 25th position went yesterday to Dick Trickle. Now the others that you will see here without a yellow mark by his name indicates that that driver has elected to stand on his time from yesterday, including uh, everybody through a uh, 30. But now the drivers with a yellow mark to the right of their make of car indicate that they will be on the racetrack here in the next half hour or so and taking another shot at getting into the starting lineup. So the eight, eight drivers stood on their time. So technically there are only five positions open and it is absolutely crunch time now. You have to just give it all you got. You can't afford to hold anything back. In fact, you got to go beyond the limit. 
to try to get in this race, in this one lap of qualifying that they have. The weather conditions are just about the same as they have been the last couple of days. Mostly sunshine. However, there are enough clouds that once in a while the track will cool to the point where a driver can actually pick up some speed because of that. I can't imagine, Ned, the amount of pressure that's on each and every one of these drivers. They've got one lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to either make it or go home. The pressure is tremendous, Bob. When, when they buckle up, you know, when you take the green flag for this race, once you've gotten in it, or the day on the yes, you have butterflies in your stomach, but nothing like that you have right now just trying to get into the field. And Bobby Hamilton and the Richard Petty STP Pontiac is the first one who will attempt here today. Given his performance in previous years here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a very disappointing run yesterday. He started on the outside of the front row last year for the second Brickyard 400, but when it came time to qualify yesterday, he could only get the STP Pontiac up to 171.979, a time of 52.332. So he's way off the pace and he's going to have to find a lot of speed. Now the black numbers indicate the trap speeds that were recorded by the 26th qualifier yesterday, John Andretti. And of course, uh, it is very important to better those numbers and become second round fastest qualifier. There's a lot at stake there. Oh, yes. so there's money up for grabs, about $5,000. And also it would give you an opportunity if you're the second round fastest qualifier to draw for a wild card entry into the Bush Clash. That won't affect Bobby Hamilton. He already has a pole and is not eligible for the Bush Clash as a result of not wearing the sticker. But you can see his speeds are pretty close to those that were turned by John Andretti there yesterday. So it looks like he's got a pretty good lap going better certainly than yesterday, I believe. And the arrows indicate the line that the drivers are using around the racetrack. The top one was the line that Andretti recorded. The bottom graphic and arrow indicates the line that Bobby Hamilton is using. Well, let's see how he fared in his uh, second qualifying run. It's a 172.954. 52.037 seconds and so Bobby Hamilton certainly betters his time from yesterday but he is only 33rd fastest right now speaking of yesterday and the qualifying round round number one there was only one real major problem that the drivers experienced and that was by Dale Jarrett the car out of turn four too high he banged the car on the right side however he was still able to turn in the 24th fastest and guarantee him spot in the lineup here's Ben Benny Parsons with an update. Well, let's ask Dale Jarrett. You wrecked a car yesterday. Yeah, but I got a good crew, so they got it back together today. Feels pretty good, too. You got out this morning? Yeah, we got out this morning. They had everything back together. You know, amazingly, it didn't even bend the rear end. Just mostly sheet metal. We had to replace the lower control arm on the right front, but everything came right back and uh, drove really good. The car you see on the racetrack right now, folks, is Dave Marcus. Dale, uh, how silly did you feel when you came back? Not, you know, silly Is it silly or bad or, or sad? I, I was pretty mad at the time, yeah, to say the least. Who were you mad at? Uh, Dale Jarrett, yeah, you know. <laughs> I had such a good lap going, I knew that I did. I mean, I knew that was the fastest I'd been, and I didn't want to lift off of that corner, but I really thought, you know, I was probably two or three miles an hour faster than I'd been through there, so obviously it just wouldn't quite turn. And guys, mad for the guys. This race car's been through a lot and hadn't even run a race yet. I reckon the Pocono qualified before I ever got to green. Yesterday, I'll, I at least got to the checkered, but uh, not exactly the way that I wanted to. I, th I think we could have definitely been in the top two or three if I'd made the lap. Yeah, so it goes, and uh, just have to come from 24th. And folks, let me tell you, the crew has done a great job at it. I can't even tell on the side of the car. You can't even tell where he hit the wall yesterday. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work back there in the garage area, but there was a lot of work going on on the racetrack also. Dave Marcus qualified yesterday at 171.402, and then he's slower than yesterday. Yeah, 170.448. And so Dave Marcus, although 35th fastest right now, is going uh, to be right on the line in terms of making this field. Well, a uh, big story yesterday has turned into somewhat of a disappointment today. Bill Weber has that story. Well, Bob, a big day for Bobby Hillen and his Jasper Ford yesterday. He qualified fifth for the Brickyard 400. Previous to that, his best qualifying effort was 17th. But... Today, Bobby Hillen, just past 10.30, put his car in the wall, a nifty move by Ted Musgrave to avoid that. Hillen's car is back in the paddock. He will run his backup car here in the Brickyard 400. It was a dream come true yesterday, but Bobby Hillen's dream has turned into a nightmare. 
I, I, I'm not saying that the motor blew right now. It, it's hard to say what happened. It, the rear wheel's locked up, and I backed in a wall. I don't know why, but uh, we're going to look at it and figure out what, what went wrong. Um, something just, something happened. It just locked the rear end up right, right before I started turning into the corner. This is the car that Bobby Hillen drove at Loudon, New Hampshire. Twice in that race, he was able to get this car up to third. This team is working very hard to prepare this car for the final happy hour practice that comes up about an hour from now. So Bobby Hillen had a great day yesterday, but on Saturday, he will start in the, of the field in a backup car, the 22 car on the track, hoping for a good qualifying run. Let's go back to Bob. That, of course, is Ward Burton in the MBNA Pontiac. 173.054 was the speed yesterday. That was 33rd fastest. And uh, I guess maybe Ned, the question uh, that a lot of people are asking is, why has he chosen to re-qualify that? Uh, well, he was smart in doing so. Yeah, picked it up a little bit. 51, 9, 4, 1 seconds, 173, 274. So that did pick him up just a little bit. And that probably will be the difference in him getting into the field, maybe not. So Ward Burton is uh, slowing down on the back stretch. Meanwhile, we have a car on the racetrack, and it is Jason No. Who is this? Steve Seligman, maybe. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a 27, 27 car. It's Jason, Jason Keller. Keller. I yes. beg your pardon. And Jerry Punch has more on that story. Jerry? Well, Bob, 26-year-old Jason Keller from Greenville, South Carolina, hopes to make his Winston Cup debut here. That's big enough in its in and of itself. But look at this race car. David Blair Motorsports doesn't have a sponsor. They have not run a race in Winston Cup competition since Charlotte back in May. So much more is riding as Keller takes the green flag on this long straightaway than just him qualifying in Indianapolis. They need to qualify in this race, get a sponsor, and hopefully keep the doors open. The crew waits patiently here on pit road. Mike Hill, the crew chief, a veteran crew, hoping maybe this young man will have just the magic to maybe get this car qualified and keep this team going. Well, they had good entrance speed into turn one, 192 compared to 193 by John Andretti yesterday, but look, five miles an hour slower as he got on the end of that turn. That's really going to hurt his overall lap time. He picks it back up a little bit as it gets into uh, turn two. Overall speed yesterday, 170.801. Jason Keller trying to get this 27 car into the field. He comes off of corner number four bit slower also at the north end of the racetrack in fact considerably slower uh, there in corner number four there's the checkered flag and Jason Keller has clocked in for the second time let's see what the lap was it is 171.979 so it's better than yesterday but only 36th fastest we'll take a break and when we come back Morgan Shepard will be on the racetrack hoping to get his car into the field Second round qualifying underway here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for tomorrow's Brickyard 400. 37 cars, including those that stood on their time, are now in the field, and Morgan Shepard seeks to get into the 38 slot, and then the bumping process will begin. Morgan Shepard yesterday, his speed was 172.381. Bob, I don't know what happened in his qualifying run, but he had been among the fastest cars in practice prior to qualifying. His run is over in the Remington Arms Ford. And the time is 52.045 seconds, 172.927 miles an hour. That's 35th fastest. And he wound up 37th fastest yesterday, so he did improve a little bit. Now the bumping process is going to begin. Well, since we ran here at the uh, Brickyard 400 last year, there have been quite a bit of improvements and changes to this uh, facility. It's a long way, Ned, down this front straightaway, five-eighths of a mile, and then into a sharp right-hander that's banked at nine degrees. And then very quickly, you get into another uh, left-hand turn to enter the back stretch. Long back stretch, flat straightaways, but then you go into another 
nine degree banking in turn three. And they run right down on the bottom of the racetrack as they come off turn four and down for the straightaway. All of that makes up what they call the world's greatest race course. Been here since 1909, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Brickyard qualifying underway, second round, and the bumping process is just about to begin. As on the racetrack, we have Ricky Rudd, who yesterday was the 35th qualifier, 172.874, and on the hot seat is Dave Marcus. Now, we might explain that there are provisionals available to drivers who uh, have them, so there is an opportunity for some drivers to get in the field if they don't make it by speed. And Rudd is very high in the point standings, so he certainly would, would have a, a provisional spot. He had a bad push in his car yesterday and uh, was not very fast. Conditions pretty good here right now. There is the cloud over the sun. Showing you the bubble speed. It is 171.9, 173 for Ricky Rudd. And let's go down to Bill Weber. Well, that cloud's not just over the track. That cloud's a little bit over Dave Marcus, too. Tough break for you, Dave. You just didn't have it. You're on the bubble right now. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's um, it's all we had. We tried at our best, and, and you know, I uh, hope that we can make it. Our sponsor, Prodigy, and everyone else is concerned. You know, everybody's worked hard. We test it well here, uh, but we just can't seem to... We haven't got going since we came back, and I can't really put my finger on it. We've changed shocks and springs, and and about everything and then you know we just haven't been able to get it yet and um we gave it another try today and we did not run as good as yesterday so um you know we're just uh i don't know what to say wait and see for dave marcus i can tell you he climbed out of that car and immediately saw it started signing autographs for his fans let's go to jerry punch well, Bill, is a green flag way for Jeff Purvis. You can't mention Indianapolis Motor Speedway without mentioning this man right here, A.J. Foyt, Super Tex, four-time winner of the Indianapolis 500. Yesterday, in this Ford Thunderbird, he was 42nd fastest at a 52.44. He said he nearly lost the car coming out of fourth, what he told me a moment ago, but they have picked up two or three-tenths of a second. This is the car that Mike Wallace used to win both the ARCA races, driving for Barry Owen early in the year, and A.J. has borrowed here. He is hopeful of maybe getting this car for the Brickyard 400. Bob? And Jeff Purvis is on the racetrack and using every available inch and then some to get this car into the show, and he's about to complete the run. He has touched the wall on the right side of the car. We'll show you a replay in just a moment as he takes the checkered flag. And the bubble speed that he is shooting for is 171.979 miles an hour. That is the time and speed recorded by Jason Keller. And it's 171.314, didn't make it. No, he did not make it. And I expect hitting the wall, slowing him down some. And let's watch it now as he comes off of turn two. I believe that would be four. Well, it's in the short shoot, actually, between yeah. turns one and two. Yep. And uh, he uh, got up there and grazed her pretty good, didn't he? Yes, he did. You can see he's pretty high coming off the turn there. The tires just simply would not get traction and shoots him right into the wall certainly scraped some speed off and also had to affect him on the other turns of the racetrack. And now here is the four-time Indianapolis 500 champion who failed to qualify for the race last year. He was in the inaugural field in 1994. Yesterday, A.J. Foyt could only get a 171.608 from this Kennebunnel car, and he's going to try to get into the show and see what happens as another driver who the crowd would very much like to see get into the field is going to try to do so. Well, certainly no one knows their way around. They seem to have to be speedway better than A.J. Foyt. Good line as he went through that turn. Kept her very low on the racetrack. Was able to keep it off the wall there where Jeff Burris was not able to. Well, he was much faster there in turn one than uh, Jason Keller was. So this may be enough to get a Foyt into the field. We'll have to wait and see a little slower out in turn number two. Down the back stretch into corner number three. And a little slower there, too. Yeah, a little slower there. So he's, he's going to have to pick up some speed here coming off of turn four. It's the tires over on the white paint in turn number four. Checkered flag comes out for A.J. Foyt. Is he going to make it? Yard 
400 field. Stopwatches are going, and well, the reaction is not good. He did not make it. Sure didn't. Missed by about a mile and a half an hour, as a matter of fact. 170.396. Well, that's too bad for A.J. Foyt, so uh, we will not see Super Techs, Super Techs in the starting lineup. We talked about people like Stacy Compton. It would mean so much to get in the field of Stacy and others. Bill Weber has more on that. Well, Stacy Compton's car has just come through inspection. They will push it now to the grid while he will attempt his qualifying run to make the Brickyard 400. It has not been a very easy day. This is a normal spark plug that would put would be in Stacy's car. But you want to run your motor as lean and as mean as possible. But you don't want something like this to happen because this is what did happen to Stacy Compton's car. He burned this piston or this uh, spark plug rather, and that's not the worst part of it. He also burned the piston, which looks even worse than this. So he's had a difficult morning. They've changed motors. The motor they have put in this car is the same one they ran at Charlotte. It has a number of laps on it, but has no laps on it here in Indianapolis. So Stacy Compton, we showed you his rig. We talked about his dream. Right now, he's gonna go out on this two and a half mile oval and see if his dream can come true. Similar situation for Randy McDonald, the young, struggling driver, hoping he can make it in to the Brickyard 400. You remember how well that Stacy Compton ran at earlier this year, and he came here to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and tested on two different occasions, just trying everything he could to get into the field. We'll see how that goes in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's watch Randy McDonald. Hey, he's got better speeds all the way around, accepting his entry into turn one, Bob. He has picked up everywhere, even there coming uh, off of turn four, so he might be able to do it. Now, Chase, he stood on his time from yesterday, Bob. He, right now, he'd be in the field. He'd probably be able to bubble, but at least he'd be in the field, but he might have a better lap than he had yesterday at 53. Jason Keller is on the bubble at 171.979. Oh! It was close. It was very close, but Randy McDonald did not make it. Jason Keller remains on the bubble. We'll run down the field and show you the rest of the qualifiers in second round when we come back to Indianapolis. Down the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the checkered flag has just come out for Derek Cope. 172.914 yesterday. He needs a 171.979 today to get into the field, and I believe that Derek Cope has indeed done it. There it is, 173.154, so he's 34th fastest. Derek Cope is in, Jason Keller is out, and now Ricky Craven will move to the bubble. Craven, of course, will be uh, uh, able to get in on a provisional should he get bumped, but the 38th car there is the one to keep your eye on. Everybody below 38, Keller, McDonald, Purvis, Marcus, and Foyt have failed to make the field. The last qualifier to go out will be Ron Barfield. Here's Jerry. No drama at all, Ron. Here you'll, be, you'll probably be the final car to go out in the Bill Elliott Motorsports Ford. Uh, can you pick it up from yesterday? Yeah, you know, this morning we run about eight tenths faster than we qualified yesterday. And, um, you know, I got a good car here. I'm trying to still get used to the race, right? But I think we're going to be all right if we can get a good lap on qualifying. But, um, you know, I got to thank New Holland and McDonald's for putting me in this show. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, many say he's the heir apparent boss. Cup race, never been in Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but Bill Elliott thinks this young man has a bright future. That's why he's in the Bill Elliott Motorsports backup car here today. No doubt he has shown us even this year that he is a man to be contending with in the coming years, uh, doing well in ARCA and other series, but uh, is struggling a bit here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He will be up in a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's watch the run of Robbie Faggart, and now again we're comparing everything to Ricky Craven's speed. 172.751. And again, Bob, his speeds look good compared to Ricky Craven. But you know, fans bear in mind that when you see how many spots on the racetrack that we are clocking, that's the trap speed at that particular point on the racetrack. It doesn't take into consideration if they might slip a little bit or something that, that might happen somewhere along the way that, that will affect the overall speed. He was about 162 off of corner number four. That is not going to be able to get him into the field. 
Much slower than uh, Ricky Craven turned in in that particular area of the racetrack. And so Fanger does only a 170. 0.882 and that is not good enough to make the field and so Ricky Craven does remain on the bubble. Faggard slowing the car down in the back stretch. BP where are you? Well Bob I'm with Charlie Presley the crew chief on the Ricky Craven Kodiak Chevrolet and who made the decision to stand on that time? Well we both did Benny. The car wasn't quite we didn't get to test. So it hurt our qualifying effort. And the car is not driving where we want it to uh, for a 400 mile race here. So we elected just to spend our time this morning working on race setup. We knew we were in the field through with all the provisionals. We, you know, we're in the show and uh, we elected just to uh, get ready to go out and do the best we can tomorrow. There's not a lot of difference in 36 and 40th, is there? No, sir, there sure isn't. And you are able to work this morning on a race setup rather than qualifying setup. Right. You know, these guys that just went second round, they made the announcement uh, this morning, 30 minutes, and we're going for the final hour of practice. And it just wasn't enough time for us to get the qualifying package out and get ready for the race setup. We're going we're to be checking you out that last hour, you know. Well, you got it, Hot Shot. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. On the bubble, guys. Yep, Ricky Craven on the bubble, and the guy trying to knock him off is Gary Bradbury. There you see it. Up as it is, 26 through 38 make the field. 38th lower, do not. Again, provisionals are available. Gary Bradbury yesterday, 171.848 in the Shoney's Restaurant Ford and Man Whiskey High coming off the corner. He got all the close to that wall up there where Dale Jarrett hit it yesterday. But he was fast up in that area of the racetrack. Let's see how it all comes together around the two and a half miles. And he did it. Bradbury did it. Morgan Shepard now goes to the uh, bubble, and Bradbury qualifies at 174.584. And wow. that is the 26th fastest, fastest second round. That is a fantastic lap. Wow. That is the story of the day so far. Gary Bradbury with an excellent, excellent run. And as I indicate, Morgan Shepard now is on the bubble, and if that holds up, he will be in the wild card draw for the Bush Clash net. Yes, he will, and uh, never know, might get in that. That race has a good chance at it. Let's go to Bill Weber. And we're here with A.J. Foyt, one name that brings a distinctive roar from the crowd here, but obviously it was a moan of disappointment, A.J., your lap. Well, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. You know, we've been able to run faster than that. And it seemed like every time the temperature comes up, for some reason, I die out there. And, and that's exactly what happened today. It's very disappointing to me and actually my fans because, you know, this ain't the way I race. And it's just, that's racing. You're going to have to take the good with the bad, I guess, through the year. And it's kind of like two years in a row, and it's very disappointing to me. Would you try it again, A.J.? Oh, yeah, I've never been a quitter, you know, but, uh, you know, it gets kind of disturbing, you know, but uh, I don't know what I'll do anymore, to be honest with you. It would be something special, though, to be in the brickyard, wouldn't it? Well, I've been here the first year, and that meant as much as anything qualifying the first year, but uh, still, I don't care where I go to race. I don't like to miss no race, and that's all I can say. Yesterday, I screwed up, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to make up some difference and today I thought this morning we shook down and run real good uh, there was no problem but uh, it seemed like every time the temperature come up on me it just kills me for some reason. Okay that's AJ Foyt he will not be in the starting field on Saturday Bob. He still has a charisma he still has an effect on the crowd here. Steve Seligman did not come uh, even close with a 167.713. He was considerably faster than yesterday's 163.1, but still, the dream does not come true for Steve Seligman. No, unfortunately, it was a good effort, but uh, not good enough. Ron Barfield and Stacy Compton, the only two that will uh, remain here in the final minutes of qualifying. Ron Barfield is out there. And again, Morgan Shepard on the bubble with a 172.927. Barfield ran a 170.168 yesterday. So he has to pick it up quite a bit. He told us that he thought he could. Get a good lap. The sun is uh, sort of shining here right now. Yes, it is.
Morgan Shepard watches intently, hoping that he will not get bumped from the starting lineup. And Ron Barfield is on the racetrack, hoping, of course, that he can. Barfield brings sponsorship to this race car, and let's see how his speeds compare with those of Morgan Shepard. Not too far off, Bob. In fact, they're, they're pretty close. Yes, they are. You see the line also that Barfield is running. He ran a little bit lower line there in the uh, dark south. Of the race track. Just now, almost identical. Yep. Coming off the corner now, the question is, can he carry the speed off of corner number four and bring it to the line? Let's see if Morgan Shepard is in or out. And if Barfield is in or out, he's 40th, but that's not good enough. 172.741 at 52.101. And Morgan Shepard survives. So Barfield was not able to carry that speed off of turn four. He had it good all the way around the racetrack, but just lacked a little bit, six hundredths of a second. And Jerry Punch is with Gary Bradbury. Gary Bradbury, 51.551. Man, what a lap. Where was this yesterday? Well, I tell you, I don't know. Uh, we were on a 51.70 something practice yesterday and then qualified a 52.38. And then this morning we run a 5160 something. I thought, man, I hope we don't come back with a 5220 something or something, you know. But uh, well, I tell you, this ain't sunk in yet. Uh, Dennis Adcock, crew chief, kept telling me, said, we're going to be 26 fastest. We're going to be 26. And I'm thinking, I just want in this race. But uh, I tell you, I'm on. Dennis and these boys have worked their tails off this weekend on the Shoney's Ford. And uh, I know I'm most exciting. This is the most exciting day, day of my career, I think, since I've been racing. Uh, and, you know, Dennis was talking earlier one time. He told somebody, he said, I've never seen Gary. He said, a lot of drivers, their hands are shaking before and after qualifying. Well, hey, he had not looked today because I'm shaking. <laughs> Gary Bradbury, 26 fats. is still one car to go, and he's on the clock, Bob. Yeah, it's Stacy Compton, the uh, Virginia driver. His mom watches intently and sees if Stacy Compton can get his Ford into the starting field. Put that different engine in it. See what he can do. Smoke there too, Bob. Yeah, or water or something may look at the car. In any case, they had a motor change in this car this morning, and we're going to see if that motor can carry him into the starting lineup. Don't Morgan so. Shepard waiting it out. It doesn't look like that Stacy's going to be able to do it. His speeds at several points on the racetrack were a little bit too slow. Nope. He didn't do it. 171.067, 44th fastest overall. Ida Compton, his mom, well, can manage a smile anyway. Here's Benny Parsons. Well, Morgan, you made it. Well, Benny, you know, the Remington Thunderbird was very fast when we came here and tested, very fast in practice. We don't know what happened. I mean, here we just barely made the field, last car in the field. We made every field this year, you know, haven't had to use a spot or anything, but boy. I don't know what happened. I mean, Wednesday afternoon in practice, you were the what in the top five yeah. practice cars. Yeah, we was we was in the top five. I mean, we was pumped up. It, these guys was biting their nails when we was getting ready to go out to qualify, and I couldn't get up to speed. The car was just so loose, I couldn't go nowhere. I don't know what happened. Then we didn't run such a great lap today, but we're practicing good. Well, that's the main thing. You are good for the 400 miles. Main thing, we're in the race. Now we can <laughs> race. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. The main thing right now is just to get in the race. We'll be here on ESPN2 for the next 25 minutes and then over on ESPN for another hour after that. Second round qualifying has just been concluded here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll show the lineup in just a moment. However, now we want to tell you what you can see in terms of other coverage. Tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN 2's RPM Tonight with John Kernan. Benny and I will be along with a Brickyard preview at 7.30 here on the Deuce. Then over on ESPN at 8.30, Dave Despain hosts Speed Week live from uh, Indianapolis Raceway Park. And at 9 o'clock tonight, he will have uh, coverage along with others of the Bush Grand National Kroger 200. Randy LaJoy is on the pole for that event, which begins at 9 o'clock Eastern 
daylight time. We have lots of coverage left here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the Deuce for the next 20 minutes and then over on ESPN for the next hour after that. We'll take a break and be right back. With qualifying concluded, here is the starting lineup for tomorrow's Brickyard 400, which begins at 1.15 tomorrow afternoon over on ABC. There are the top 15 qualifiers from yesterday. Jeff Gordon will once again lead them to the green flag tomorrow afternoon. Now let's show you the 16 through 30 qualifiers. And of course, from 26 on back were those that were determined here today. Gary Bradbury, his time would have been 18th fastest had he turned that yesterday. Boy, a very impressive performance by Gary Bradbury, and he'll be eligible for the Bush Clash. And there you see through 38 and two drivers who get in on provisionals. Ricky Craven starts 39, and Dave Marcus does get in the field starting in last position. Dave Marcus takes a provisional and makes the Brickyard 400. Back with more from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in just a moment. Our coverage of the Brickyard 400 third annual continues tomorrow with RPM today at 1130 Eastern Time. We'll have a Brickyard preview on ESPN at noon. The race itself is at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC and then the whole wrap up tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock on RPM tonight here on ESPN2. Well, Benny Parsons, congratulate Dave Marcus on behalf of Ned and me. By golly, he made the race, didn't he? Hey, Dave, Bob Jenkins said congratulations on behalf of he and Ned Jerry. Well, I'll tell Bob and Ned thank you, but I'll tell you what, Benny, I'm smiling now, but really, in all reality, 10 minutes ago, I was pretty nervous, and uh, I mean, you know, it, it's we gave it our best, but we're short. We tested good up here and come back, and we have not been able to get the car going since we've been here, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tight. I don't know what to say. I'm just tickled to death for my sponsor prodigy that we're in this race you know last year we missed it now let me ask you something you're starting 40th you go back to the motel tonight you're going to go out and practice the last happy hour you go back tonight do you really and truly sit down and think about winning the brickyard 400 well yeah i mean you know 40th first whatever we still come here to run good and run up front and, and do what we can to get our sponsor some publicity we're going to practice here in this next practice. We're going to practice hard. We're going to work on the car. We're going to change springs. We're going to change shocks. We're going to change the front fender tuck. We're going to do what we can to get this race car better. So far, we haven't been able to do it. Bob, 40 cars tomorrow in the Brickyard 400. Every one of them, when they go to sleep tonight, will dream about winning the Brickyard 400. Only one can, however, but uh, before that, Dave Marcus has a job ahead of him, and that is to get the car handling during happy hour, and we will have that over on the other network, ESPN, beginning in about 15 minutes. And we'll be back here on The Deuce to talk with Ron Barfield in just a moment. Stay with us from Indianapolis. Back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and here now is the rundown. Look for your favorite driver and uh, jot them down if you'd like. These are the drivers and the cars that have made it into the lineup for the third annual Brickyard 400. The top 25 were established yesterday, and uh, a bit of a surprise is Gary Bradbury was the second round fastest qualifier a few minutes ago at 174.584. Here's the final group. 40 cars will be starting. And of course, the provisionals were taken by Ricky Craven and Dave Marcus. Randy Holzman. Let's go to Bill Weber, who's with Gary Bradbury. Well, I'm actually with Ron Barfield, who's still able to smile, despite the fact you're not in the Brickyard 400. You guys had it all, just couldn't quite put it together in the few days you had here, Ron. Well, you know, I got to thank all my guys here. I mean, they really worked hard for me all week. And, um, you know, I want to thank New Holland and, and McDonald's for letting me do this deal. And, um, you know, it, it was an experience. I learned a lot. And, um, you know, we'll go back to the shop and try to get better and might try to do another one one day. Who, who knows? What would you learn the most, Ron? Well, I tell you, what I really learned, whenever you step up to this level, you be ready, you got to be ready to play. But, um, you know, these guys here gained a lot of respect from me, and, um, you know, they really get a race car around the racetrack. And, and if you don't really realize, you just need to come and compete with these guys because it, it really is a, an experience for you. And, um, you know, like, again, I got to thank New Holland and McDonald's for letting me do this deal. And, um, you know, Peter Bond with, with New Holland, you know, thanks for the support. And, um, you know, we'll be looking for it later on. Okay, drives for Bill Elliott. We'll see him again. There's no doubt about that. 
Ron Barfield among those who did not make the race but you heard him say that he learned a lot by coming here and that is an important aspect of this whole thing. It really is and you see some pretty good names on there including A.J. Foyt that did not uh, make this race and uh, certainly a lot of hopefuls but uh, some came awfully close but just couldn't quite get it done. At 3 o'clock we'll move over to ESPN and bring you the last hour practice happy hour. One of the big stories remains Dale Earnhardt and his relief driver Mike Skinner back in just a moment. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, Dr. Jerry Punch back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the second round of qualifying has just been concluded. We await the beginning of happy hour just a little bit past the hour and again we'll have all of it for you over on ESPN. We'll switch there in about 10 minutes. Jerry Punch has an update on the Dale Earnhardt Mike Skinner situation. Well, Bob, here in the Good Wrench Garage, if you're a hunting enthusiast, what they're doing now is packing powder. They call it packing powder, cocking the hammer, getting ready to fire one final round of practice. The word is that Skinner was supposed to drive this final round of practice, but they have gotten word here in the garage that, surprisingly, Dale Earnhardt is feeling better, getting a little bit better as we get away from that crash five days ago. And then Earnhardt will indeed come over and maybe run a lap or two before happy hour is over. These guys are smiling, knowing that Skinner is getting better and better, and the champ, the intimidator, might get in the car as well. Bob? Mike Skinner sure showed him how to drive a truck last night, didn't he, at Indianapolis Raceway Park? He really did. He started on the pole and led every lap. And so with the two Craftsman truck races that have been held at Indianapolis Raceway Park, nobody else has led a lap there excepting Mike Skinner. David Smith crawling under the car and uh, preparing it for the happy hour. Bill Elliott also knows how to drive a race car, and uh, he's standing by with Benny Parsons. Hey, Bill, that's a pretty good qualifying run you had. Well, pretty decent. I, I felt really good about it. The, the one thing about it was we, we came here and tested after Loudon, New Hampshire. I had a cold. I felt bad. We were supposed to run three, uh, for three days. We only ran two and we didn't run a lot of the two. We came here and unloaded on Wednesday. We chased our tail for a long time and finally got things decent. Then Thursday, we had a little bit of motor problems. We had to change motors for qualifying. I never got to do a real qualifying run on Thursday. So uh, we just kind of went out cold turkey and the car worked well. And uh, you know, all this McDonald's bunch has done a good job. You know, you've been running hurt, been playing hurt for the last couple of races. What's Earnhardt going through with uh, collarbone broken, sternum broken? Well, if it's his playing hurt, I'd hate to see what really hurt is. I can sympathize with him, but like I said, I, you know, this time, the same time after the Talladega race that I went through, I was still laying in the hospital. You know, he's fortunate enough to be out and be able to get back in the car where I wasn't. Uh, you know, and it's just, that race is just so, un such a hard race to get through anymore. You know, you know something's gonna happen, you just don't know when. And you hope it's not you, but unfortunately it was. Unfortunately it was the first race, and uh, thank God it wasn't the second race, because I don't think I would have stood another one. And you know, Earnhardt thought you hit him, but it was Schrader all the time. I can't believe he accused me of doing something I didn't even do. <laughs> he didn't hit him, guys. Folks, he did not hit Dale Earnhardt while he's rolling down the racetrack at Talladega. He didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Elliott will start seventh tomorrow. Well, again, a reminder, we'll be wrapping things up here on the deuce in the next five or six minutes. As you can hear the engines getting set for happy hour, we'll have coverage of it over on ESPN1 at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Stay with us. We'll be back here in just a moment. 7 o'clock tonight here on ESPN2, RPM tonight with John Kernan. He'll wrap up things from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and preview what happens at IRP tonight. Benny and I will be here with a Brickyard preview at 7.30. Speed Week is at 8.30, and the Bush Grand National Kroger 200 at 9 o'clock Eastern time over on ESPN. And Benny and Ned will have a, a role in that race tonight. The starting lineup once again at uh, 1.15 Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. We've got engines running in the background of uh, here in the garage area as they're getting set to go onto the track for happy hour, Ned. And boy, this is the most important test they've had since they've been here, Bob, getting those cars in race trim. There's been a good bit of running here in the last few days, so the track is the closest to actual race conditions that we have seen it. Gary Bradbury starts 26, followed by John Andretti, Jeff Burton, Jeff Bodine, Mike, Michael Waltrip, the 30th starter tomorrow. 
Now take a look at the final 10 that got in today. Two of them had to take provisionals. Ricky Craven is 39th and Dave Marcus is 40th. Benny, it's getting awful loud back here. Happy hour is just moments away. And you know what? They can't wait. They don't want 59 minutes of practice. They want the full 60. Here we see Robert Presley, Sterling Marlin, Michael Walter. Rick, they're even working on Ricky Craven's car while he's sitting in line to get ready to go. As soon as they open this gate, these babies are going to drop the hammer and get to it. Going to be like the, going to be like the floodgates opening. Bill is with Dick Trickle, Bill. And Dick's anxious to climb into his Ford. I just asked him, are you going to race good on Saturday? He looked at me out of the corner of his eye and said, we're going to be OK. Well, this hour tells you a lot. You know, this is our final tune-up. Uh, this morning, we ran some good laps, but we're a little on tight side, a little on the loose side. We'll try to balance out this last hour. But you know, we're, we had some good news and bad news call buying. We didn't get the lap we expected. We had practiced faster than that. But the good news was we made it the first round. So uh, now we're in. Uh, we got a good race car, good engine. Larry Walt builds a super motor. And I, I see the Heilig Meyer car in the top 10. Dick Trickle starts 25th in the Brickyard to Dr. Punch. Hey, Bill, one reason this final practice is so critical, not only to dial the car in, but this is sort of race day temperatures and conditions that, that the shadows begin to come over the racetrack. And look behind me, the wind beginning to pick up directly out of the north. Those are the flags over the tower terrace. The drivers will have a tailwind coming out of turn four, but they'll have a headwind coming off turn two. They get these cars dialed in now for what will happen tomorrow at 12 noon. Benny? Hey, all the cars are rolling on the racetrack. Travis Carter, you got one hour. What are, what are your first change you're going to make? Hopefully, Benny, we... we... We hope we don't make any changes. We felt pretty good this morning about our car. Everybody's excited about the, the you know, the Brickyard 400 being a big, to us the biggest race of the year, and we think we're in good shape, and we're looking forward to it. How many laps you go run in practice? Well, whatever he feels to get him a good reading on the car, you know, and we, we basically really need to make sure, of one thing, we keep our car so we can make some adjustments. If it's a little tight, a little loose, we can sort of work it either way, but I think we're pretty close, and hopefully a good sign to us, if the car is pretty same, the much the same in the afternoon practice as the morning practice, if that's the case, normally things will go real well for you. Bill Weber? Last week we were in Talladega, but the focus of a lot of attention was on this race, the Brickyard 400. I tell you sincerely that six teams personally guaranteed me they will win this race, but only one team can. The next hour will give us a good barometer as to which guy can get to the front and maybe stay there on Saturday. Jerry Punch. Hey, Bill, this guy will start at the front. What's happening here is the final debriefing, final practice session coming up in about three minutes. Jeff Gordon and the man they've nicknamed named the coach now, Ray Evernham, who Gordon listens to every single lap of the race. Gordon will listen to him all day long, and hopefully he can coach him to victory number two in the Brickyard 400. Bob? The tension is building for happy hour. Brickyard coverage continues. Get your channel changers ready. We're going to switch over to ESPN here in just a matter of seconds, and you'll be able to see most of the final hour of practice for, yes, for tomorrow's Brickyard 400.